Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mars Madness and the launch of Gloria's wonderful book. Uh, I wanted to start right up front with the book because um, on the front, Gloria asked if I, she could use one of my paintings. And so this, this disc of Mars is a painting of mine that I want to tell you about. Um, what I did there was try to show not really the Mars that we scientifically know today, but the basic markings on Mars, but with the features that people thought existed on Mars back in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, and then when Ray was growing up. And what I'm talking about is that, uh, you know, Percival Lowell, an astronomer, came to Flagstaff, made an observatory up there on Mars Hill in Flagstaff, and believed that he was seeing straight line features which many other astronomers had reported also. But, but Lowell thought these were precisely straight lines and called them canals. And he concluded there was a big civilization on Mars that had built these big canals. So I wanted to imagine, suppose the first spacecraft to get to Mars, which were Mariner 4 in the mid 1960s, Mariner 7, 6 and 7, and Mariner 9 in the early 70s, Imagine if that one of those spacecraft was approaching Mars and turned on the cameras and actually saw the Mars that Ray Bradbury grew up with, which was this Mars with canals and a possible uh, civilization. Now, I was really interested in why people, why the astronomers in that period had seen canals. So in a book I did, this Traveler's Guide to Mars, I... Um, arranged some pictures with a map from the 1800s, a uh, map that's a modern map that was made in Flagstaff in, say, the 1960s, and then the actual photographs from Mars. So what, what you discover is that in the places where people saw the most prominent canals, there actually were streaks on Mars, which was wind-blown dust blown out of craters, for instance, if you had dark dust on the floor of the crater and the wind storm comes through, and it leaves this big tail of uh, dust on the surface, which then looks like a straight line if you're just barely glimpsing it in a telescope. So uh, there was something actually there, and it's interesting to imagine Ray growing up with this idea of civilization on Mars. For, for our book, we did a little painting of um, what Mars might have looked like if there was a Mars civilization. And my friend Ron Miller did this uh, digital artwork. And it's kind of fun because um, we put some Martians on a balcony. And that little piece of the picture is actually based directly on an illustration from a magazine in 1910 showing what Lowell thought was there. And the magazine, of all things, was Cosmo, Cosmopolitan, when it was actually running articles about Mars. Uh, so there's the canals and so forth. I actually met Ray later on. I was on the Mariner 9 mission. That was really exciting because we, we discovered the big volcanoes and the dry riverbeds that looked like the Santa Cruz and dunes and all these other features. That was the first mission to map Mars from orbit. And at the end of the mission, so we're talking around 1973, 74, uh, I had the idea, well, we were invited to produce a book in a NASA series about uh, the mission itself. That was, there was a series of these books, one after each mission. So I had volunteered to get into that. And um, I had this idea that uh, J, the jet, jet Propulsion Lab people were in contact with Bradbury, and I got his phone number, and I had this idea we could get Ray Bradbury to write a preface for our little book. And I called him up, and he did write it. So we had this beautiful one-page preface from Ray. And uh, it's all about uh, the fantastic idea of landing on Mars, and if there's even a one paramecium, we have to treasure that and preserve the environment on Mars where, where these organisms might have grown and so forth. Um, put that in the book. The last minute, one of the NASA officials uh, decided to cut Bradbury's preface out of the book. 
And the reason was that NASA couldn't go on record, supposedly, um, with the idea that there might be a paramecium on Mars, and that was just too far out. And so my wonderful Ray Bradbury preface <laughs> went down the tubes. Um, but I did have chances to interact with Bradbury. You know, he came here, I think you'll hear more in, in the discussions today about uh, the time he spent in Tucson. And he had boyhood, a boyhood friend here. And so he came to Tucson a couple of times and gave talks. And after one of those, they were looking for a place for, to take Ray after the talk. And our house is just a few blocks from campus. So he actually came over and sat in our living room. That was really cool. And I had a chance to get to some of my Bradbury books autographed and so forth. So it was really fun just sitting around and talking with him. But what I remember from his talks were the, how ebullient and enthusiastic he was. And he said, I can't, this is my favorite quote was that I can't understand people, these writers that have writer's block and they can't think of anything to write. He says, when I wake up in the morning, I have all these ideas in my head and they all say, write me, write me. And I have to decide which one I'm going to write that day. So he was full of ideas. I just wanted to thank uh, Gloria for the wonderful book, but also thank all the scientists and artists and writers and engineers who've lived in Tucson and helped make such a creative community that we have here. Mm -hmm.